Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Source. Happy Saturday to all watching. Today we're going to be talking about severe weather across the southwest of the nation, severe weather also and some heavy rainfall and snow across the southeast of the nation through Victoria and Tasmania. We'll take a look up in far north Queensland about a bit of rainfall up there and we'll also talk about a hot spell that's expected to extend across central Australia. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Your support is greatly appreciated. Starting things off over in the southwest of Western Australia, you can see a strong cold front has brushed through the south of the state overnight, bringing rainfall accumulations up to 30 millimetres overnight to areas around Collie and Bunbury. And behind it, we've got a vigorous westerly flow that's bringing damaging winds, heavy showers, and some thunderstorms as well to the southwest corner of the state. Some heavy showers blowing through Perth right now as we speak, and some heavy showers expected to continue through parts of the southwest and the south coastal regions through today and into early tomorrow morning. This vigorous westerly flow is causing winds sustained up to 70 kilometres an hour, gusting stronger than that up to 100 kilometres an hour. We did have a 100 kilometre an hour wind gust at Rottnest Island at about 3 a.m. last night. Now, such a severe weather warning is current for the majority of the southwest of the state, um, extending from a line inland from Durian Bay through to Mora, uh, down towards uh, Corrigan, including locations such as Narrage and Katanning Lake Grace, and then inland towards Ravensthorpe and down towards Esperance. And all of that area, basically outlined by the cursor at this time, is currently under a severe weather warning for damaging winds and isolated pockets of heavy rainfall as a result of this cold front and low pressure system. Cold temperatures are also being followed by this weather system as well. You can see daytime maxima not expected to break double digits in some locations today down towards Manjimup and Jacob. We're looking at maxima for only around 11 or 12 degrees Celsius there and probably colder in some more elevated areas. So it's looking very cold and very windy so definitely rug up throughout the course of today. Now the good news is, is the weather will be easing off throughout the course of today. You can see the showers are still quite heavy across a lot of the southwest, especially around the south coast, but as today goes on we'll likely see a slight uptick in showers to around midday before they really start to steady, uh, settle down later on this afternoon and gone by this evening, especially from the Perth area. They will contract to the south coast later on today and into tonight and they will continue for locations such as Esperance into early tomorrow morning with those strong winds continuing into tomorrow afternoon for the south coastal regions but this vigorous westerly flow will clear out by at, at the very latest at least around 8 p.m for the southwest corner and i imagine that severe weather warning will be dropped at around 8 p.m as well from the bureau of meteorology and then looking forward it doesn't look like we're in for an awful lot of wet conditions there will still be a few showers monday and tuesday next week from a cold front especially tuesday by the looks of things this cold front doesn't look too strong but it still could dump a little bit of rainfall another cold front coming through next thursday the 29th of august and then after that it really doesn't look like we've got much in the way of cold front activity under the influence of some high pressure ridges it looks like september is going to start off pretty dry and pretty cold as well for some locations in stark contrast to what we'll talk about later on in the video it looks like the southwest is going to remain rather cold to end off august and rather cold to start off september with dry conditions expected in the wake of these cold fronts. So let's break down that rainfall forecast right now. Throughout the next 24 hours, including the remainder of today, we're expecting rainfall accumulations up to 25 millimetres across the southwest. The heaviest of the falls will be around Harvey and Collie. Last night actually was not wet at all. The Bureau of Meteorology highlighting up to 45 millimetres was possible for some of the eastern suburbs in Perth. I don't think a single suburb picked up more than 10 millimetres from the main cold front. So it was certainly a dry weather system that came through. Um, and that was just because of how windy and how fast moving the weather system was. And I called it from the start. I didn't think that we were going to be seeing 45 or 50 millimetres, at least around the Perth area. I did still highlight the chances up to 50 or 60 millimetres across some pockets of the southwest. And it looks like those totals are going to be um, achieved, at least around Collie, by the looks of things, especially throughout the course of today with more showers coming through. Perth not expecting too much more rainfall, just a couple more millimetres. And then you can see the coming few days look like they're going to be pretty dry. Only a couple of millimetres expected Monday. A few more drops of rainfall expected Tuesday with the passage of that cold front, and then a few more drops of rainfall Thursday with that other cold front coming through, but only a couple of millimetres is expected there before dry conditions close out August. And close out what has been a pretty wet winter across the southwest, I did say it will be a sharp end to winter, and you'll certainly be able to realise when... Um, spring is fully in swing at least across parts of the southwest and it looks like that is going to be happening pretty soon just with the return to more dry light conditions towards the end of august and the start of september i do still believe we'll be seeing cold fronts deep into september at least towards the 20th or the, uh, even the 30th of september but definitely towards the end of september i think we'll be receiving much less rainfall and much less cold front activity and i only expect about 40 or 50 millimeters across the perth metro area in terms of rainfall 
uh, for September. I don't think it's going to be overly wet at all. That's not to say though that we're going to be plunged straight into dry and drought-like conditions. I do expect it to still remain wetter than average across parts of the southwest right through to about October or November, but I do think the really wet conditions are going to start easing off very much so. It's been a very good winter for a lot of locations across the southwest. The cold front that came through last night was definitely one of the closing systems to come through. Um, and yeah, what a way to send off what has been a very good winter. We've had some great rainfall across the southwest, and it has been seen through the drought monitoring map. There's no drought pockets across any of the wheat belt or any of the southwest communities at all. And there's only a couple of drought pockets across the central west and the gas coin regions of Western Australia as a whole. There definitely has been average rainfall across a lot of the state, and soil moisture values certainly look really good across a lot of the state as well, with moisture values significantly uh, higher than average across big pockets of the southwest. There are a couple of spots that are slightly below average, but across the southwest and the central west, for the most part, it is very much above average, which is fantastic to see this time of the year. It means that we're going to see a very good harvest from a lot of farmers, and I think it might be time to start really expecting that good harvest as well. We're not looking at an all-out Armageddon in terms of frost conditions coming through. We'll take a look at the temperatures now at least, but to close off August and to close off winter as a whole, it doesn't look like it's going to be too cold, and it looks like those frosts are going to be kept at bay at least for the first part of September, which is fantastic to see, and I bet farmers are loving hearing all of this, but I really don't have any bad news to report for a lot of the Southwest over the coming week or so, and in fact, just to close off winter as a whole, I think it's a pretty safe bet at this time that we are going to see a very good end to cropping season 2024 across the Southwest of Australia, which is just fantastic to see. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said over east. The southeast of the uh, nation has struggled with a lot of drought issues, and they're still currently being plagued by moderate to severe drought conditions across parts of Victoria and New South Wales. Thankfully, there is a silver lining to this. Over the coming week, there's going to be a very significant amount of rainfall streaming in across a lot of Victoria, parts of New South Wales, and Tasmania as well. You can see a couple of showers across New South Wales this time, the odd thunderstorm as well here and there being powered by a trough and a bit of a northerly flow that's just creating the odd speckly cloud across parts of northern and central New South Wales. It's expected to expand throughout the course of today as well. We're also looking at the chances of some thunderstorms tomorrow across Victoria and New South Wales. In fact, we could be talking about a bit of a thunderstorm outbreak tomorrow afternoon and evening across parts of New South Wales and Victoria. It really looks like we're going to be seeing, at least in the front of this uh, weather system, like I said, that, that thunderstorm outbreak powered by warm temperatures and a lot of energy and instability in the environment for thunderstorms to really milk and use uh, in order to get quite strong and quite powerful. So I'd not be surprised if severe thunderstorms did pipe up across central Victoria and parts of New South Wales throughout the course of tomorrow afternoon. I think the most likely locations for these thunderstorms would be around Wagga Wagga, Albury, and then into the mountainous areas across the foothills of the Great Dividing Range and even into the more mountainous areas around Falls Creek and Mount Hotham. There could be some significant falls around there up towards 40 or 50 millimetres from these thunderstorms. Again, from thunderstorms, so the rainfall will be pretty hit and miss. A couple of good falls also possible around Tasmania before a couple of days of dry weather until Tuesday when another powerful cold front sweeps up from the south Tuesday night and impacts Tasmania's west coast and central highlands with some pretty significant falls. And then from Wednesday onwards, it is just all out winter weather once again with an onshore flow bringing uh, very cold conditions to a lot of Tasmania. Snow down to about 800 metres across Wednesday, about 700 metres across Thursday before rain pipes up again Thursday afternoon. The snow line obviously increases with that um warmer weather that's going to be brought in with that cold front, so snow is only possible down towards 1,200 metres later on Thursday, but we'll still be seeing snow on Friday down towards about 1,000 metres and more rainfall and snow expected throughout Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Sunday expected to be notably cold to start off September. We're going to be seeing that onshore flow really bring those temperatures down across central uh, Tasmania where they could be below zero for the entire duration of su Saturday and Sunday as well. And in fact, there is a chance that temperatures, especially around some of the more mountainous areas and in fact on the top of mountains, don't rise above zero between Tuesday and about Sunday to start off September. Because of the nature of this onshore flow here, it certainly looks like a lot of very cold and somewhat violent winter weather is inbound for Tasmania, and I imagine a week-long severe weather warning will be issued for parts of Tasmania. We can't be forgetting about Victoria and New South Wales as well. Showers will be pretty common across parts of the farming districts across Victoria, and they'll also be apparent across the mountainous areas with showers and snow down to about 1,000 metres across Victoria and about 1,200 metres across New South 
South Wales, especially through Saturday and early Sunday morning. We're also talking about the risk of showers and snow on Wednesday and Thursday, the 28th and 29th of August over there. Uh, and this is all going to be adding up. You can see rainfall accumulations are going to be sky high over the next 10 days. I'll just flat out spoil it right now. But take a look at rainfall accumulations across Tasmania. We've been talking about this for the last couple of days, but accumulations between two and 300 millimetres over the next 10 days are possible. And not just possible, expected as well. So some very significant winter rainfall is expected to come through. And it's certainly going to be the uh, wettest rainfall that they've received for the majority of the winter season by the looks of things, especially into early next week. And some good falls as well for Victoria. Around the central parts of Victoria, around Ararat and Ballarat, we're looking at temperatures, uh, temperatures, rainfall rather, of around 40 to 60 millimetres over the next 10 days and into the highlands between 80 and 100 millimetres for locations. New South Wales will miss out on the significant falls. Uh, the highlands will still cop a decent uh, drenching especially in certain places and some good falls are also possible into the agricultural districts a couple of millimeters expected out there but nothing too crazy and nothing comparable to what tasmania is expecting and again the bulk of this rainfall will be coming through from tuesday evening next week you can see it here on the forecast uh basically 90 percent of the rainfall that's expected on this forecast run does come through wednesday the 28th through to monday the 2nd of september so certainly some very significant falls expected in a short period of time especially across tasmania and some good falls as well across Across, uh, Victoria. Melbourne itself expecting around 20 to 40 millimetres of rainfall over the next sort of, well, in the week between sort of Tuesday and Monday uh, to end off August and start off September. The eastern and the northern suburbs, especially around the foothills, expecting higher accumulations up towards 50 millimetres. The foothills of the Great Dividing Range are also expecting some significant falls. Again, a couple of good drops of rainfall are expected tomorrow from that severe thunderstorm event that we've highlighted. But yeah, all in all, Tasmania certainly does look to be the wettest out of all of this. Hobart expecting about 50 millimetres. Millimeters uh, over that same week long period, uh, but the west coast is the runaway leader in terms of rainfall. Some massive accumulations are possible there. Some good snowfall as well, up to a meter of the stuff is expected across the highlands of Tasmania between Wednesday and Monday, same time period that you can see in the bottom part of your screen. And some good snowfall as well, expected to finish off skiing season 2024 up in the highlands of New South Wales. About 15 to 20 centimeters is possible there, and a lot of that will also settle. So, some good snowfall is expected to really just put the icing on the cake up in those mountainous areas and those ski resorts, which is fantastic to see. This is a slight downtrend in the snow forecast from yesterday, so I imagine the forecast models will just continue to back off the amount of snowfall that they're expecting. And I believe that's just because it's start, starting to warm up over Victoria and Tasmania. So there'll be more rainfall and slightly less snowfall by the looks of things. Now, I bet you're feeling really cold with this forecast, especially if you live in the southeast of the nation and just really cold if you live in the southwest because of the weather that's coming through. So let's warm you up with some of the temperatures that are now on the forecast. It's another hot one across parts of central Australia today. You can see temperatures expected to soar well into the mid to high 30s. In fact, temperatures already well and truly into the, mid, uh, into the low to mid 30s across parts of South Australia and Queensland. You can see some warm temperatures expected throughout the course of today. In fact, just north of Udenada could be seeing up towards 38 degrees or 39 degrees Celsius today, so certainly starting to get quite warm there. Tomorrow expected to be another hot one, especially around Birdsville and Moomba in remote Queensland and South Australia. A slight reprieve to the temperatures on Monday and Tuesday by the looks of things. It will warm up once again Tuesday and Wednesday just in the wake of these low pressure systems moving through. And across the Northern Territory and especially into Western Australia, temperatures are expected to soar Wednesday. Also very warm across parts of southeastern Queensland and northeastern New South Wales. Temperatures expected into the low 30s on Wednesday, Thursday, and also Friday. Friday, so certainly going to be a hot way to end August. Uh, and it looks like the last day of August is well going to be pretty warm. Well, the last couple of days across Central Australia are going to be pretty warm. In Central Northern Territory and parts of Queensland, above 40 degrees Celsius for the first time. Um, in the northern wet season time frame. Again, this is typical weather for this time of the year. It's certainly when things start to warm up, especially with these low pressure ridges that are going to be extending through the central parts of the nation. Uh, but it is certainly quite early still for this time of the year. And like I said, and I've said this for the last couple of videos, short, sharp end to winter. Uh, and yeah, you've been thrown into the deep end with temperatures going from average to about 12 degrees Celsius above average for this time of the year. Now, at least for New South Wales and parts of uh, northeastern New South Wales, rather Saturday and Sunday will be a little bit cooler just with the low pressure systems and the winds that are going to be streaming through out of the south but temperature is going to be very warm across southeastern Queensland to end off August up to 32 degrees uh, next Saturday for Brisbane very warm indeed across parts of the Sunshine Coast as well to start off September and warm across central Queensland and into the Northern Territory and Western Australia too it just looks like all out warm weather is about to start across a lot of Australia and it is great to see it certainly is making me excited for summer and the summer forecasts are not going to be far behind so make sure
sure you are subscribed and stay tuned for those because we'll be covering a lot about thunderstorms and tropical cyclones and if that is your cup of tea then this is the place to be certainly subscribe to the channel if you haven't already but yeah if you've got any questions or comments about the warm weather if you'd like specifics ironed out for your location then please do let me know in the comment section down below but i think we've only got a couple of weeks left of these wintry weather conditions across central australia again it will continue for the southwest and the southeast of the state especially uh, the nation rather especially into tasmania they've got a couple more months of really cold weather to continue however it looks like across south australia parts of western australia new south wales and queensland the cold weather is finally starting to clear out which is fantastic to see now i did say just before i finish off the video that we'll touch on far north queensland there's not an awful lot to be talking about but they do still have some showers on the forecast over the next 10 days you can see accumulations into the dane tree expected to be above 100 or up towards 100 millimeters over the next 10 days the bulk of that rainfall i believe will be coming through um oh, actually it's pretty evenly spread across the next sort of uh week or so yeah, so until about Friday, it looks like some pretty steady falls are going to be streaming ashore. There are a couple of showers expected throughout the course of today. We're expecting some light falls to continue throughout the course of today. Again, nothing too crazy for these areas. Just a couple of millimetres are possible. But we have had accumulations up to 200 millimetres across the parts of far north Queensland in the last week or so. So certainly some heavy rainfall has already fallen. Again, 200 millimetres is a bit of a stretch to class it as heavy for tropical far north Queensland. But you get my point. If we see another 50 millimetres on top of that, then the rainfall accumulation really do start adding up and climbing quite fast. Showers will continue through Sunday uh, and into early Monday morning as well before clearing out Monday afternoon. Oh no, they do continue for Monday and Tuesday actually. I believe they clear out properly by Thursday. A couple of showers still expected here and there throughout the later parts of next week, but it looks like a little bit of drier weather is expected to start off September. Uh, but it's not going to be long until those onshore flows really do start piping up across the Coral Sand. We start seeing more significant rainfall accumulations start to really build across parts of the far north of Queensland and that will only happen later September, early October. So make sure you are staying tuned for more of the coverage on the tropical rainfalls up in far north Queensland and northern Australia as a whole. But yeah, that's another long-winded forecast update for the entirety of the nation. If I have left anything unanswered or if you've got questions or comments, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. I believe we actually have made a forecast for every single state, which is the first time we've done this on this channel. So again, uh, that's a bit of a step in the right direction, I guess, because we normally do focus on one part of the nation in these videos. But I believe every single state got a reasonably fair mention in this video. So if you do have any questions or comments, please do let me know in the comment section down below. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now and I could not run this show without them. The support is absolutely amazing and I do appreciate them uh, through every video that I make. Thank you so much for watching the video to this point and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Happy Saturday. Goodbye.